We follow up on the segment that I just did about Marjorie Taylor Greene's effort to oust Speaker of the House Mike Johnson and the reaction specifically that we've seen in right-wing media and among Republicans. In the last segment, I told you that I have so many that we're going to have to break it up into two segments. So that's what we're doing here. Now we'll focus on Fox News. Okay. Some reactions we've seen in Fox News uh, to this. And I want you to keep in mind, the main point that I have for you in this segment is Yes, MAGA can't govern. Yes, this is indicative of broader issues with the MAGA movement and ridiculous figures like Marjorie Taylor Greene and all of it. But here, I want you to keep in mind that Fox News as an institution, and thus many of these commentators you're going to hear from, they are in part to blame for any of the current events they're upset with. Because right now, they're really bothered. They are. The fact that the House majority is just a disaster. And it's just just embarrassing itself over and over again. It can't do a single thing that they can later run on. And that is really upsetting to those who want to advocate on behalf of the Republican Party continuing to be the majority, right? And so you understand why they'd be upset. But the very MAGA characteristic that would incentivize this behavior from Marjorie Greene is something that's been a, around a long time and Fox News has rooted on. And that is this sort of policy-free cult of personality. Everything's about stunts and owning the libs and getting attention, etc. And that sort of governance or lack thereof is exactly what Fox News has enabled for quite a long time now. And so now them being really upset is... Uh, not something we have to feel bad about, I guess. Okay, here is the first from Trey Gowdy, which to his credit, I think he does call out MAGA here and there. What person that can pass a competency test would want to be the Speaker of the House? What person who, would, who could actually pass a psychiatric competency test would want to lead a group that includes Matt Gates and Bob Good and some of the other people that you just showed? I mean, I, Mike Johnson's as good as a gun. You had a speaker. Mm -hmm. Remember, you had Kevin McCarthy, yeah. and you wanted to get rid of him, and Jimmy Jordan wasn't yeah. good enough, and Tom Emmer wasn't good enough, and Steve Scalise. So, no, you got Mike Johnson. Trey, I don't think they're going to... Yeah, there's no one, as I said in a previous segment, that could be speaker that would satisfy MAGA and the moderate Republicans at this point. Mike Johnson was apparently the only guy who could get enough votes, again, in a time where they had a larger majority than they currently have after recent resignations and George Santos being ousted, which, by the way, he said he's so embarrassed by the Republican Party now that he's leaving it and he's running as an independent for Congress. Just don't. Yeah, my goodness. Yikes. But even George Santos can't take it with the Republican Party. He's too honest for this lying Republican Party. He actually criticized the GOP for being too dishonest and deceptive. Wow. Which it indeed is those things. But you embody that better than anyone, George. Here's another example. Mark, let's start right across the block there. Um, are we going to have another few weeks of trying to elect a speaker or, or what happens? God help us. Uh, the House Republican majority is a dysfunctional embarrassment. I mean, Johnson, Speaker Johnson didn't ask for this job. He stepped up when, when the House couldn't elect a, a replacement for Kevin McCarthy. He's trying to manage an unmanageable conference. Republicans need to understand that they control one half of one branch of government and now they're gonna control it by one vote. You can't impose your will on the entire government when you have one half of one branch of government with one vote. The way, if you want, I want to get cut spending too. I want to, I want to do all these things. If you want to do that, there's a simple way to do it. Win elections. Don't nominate lunatics. Uh, you know, get people who can actually win a general election, not just a Republican primary. Take back the Senate. Take back the White House. That's how Biden got the spending through. So that's how, if we want to cut the spending, that's how you get to do it. You can't do it by having this internal chaos. Okay. And again, there's all these people now. Oh my gosh. Just so crazy. So chaotic. We've been over here getting called too liberally biased for pointing to the characteristics of MAGA that will inevitably lead to this sort of detrimental uh, result. And now those who would accuse such commentators of being too liberally biased are realizing, oh, 
when a movement takes over a party and that movement stands for anti-institutional, anti-democratic, anti-policy, and pro-cult of personality principles, it's not going to end well, okay? That's just the reality. And we've been trying to call attention to that. Now, some people on Fox News are realizing it themselves. And I can't speak to the two individuals you just saw there. I don't know them as well as I know our next example. So maybe they have here and there called attention to something, but clearly not enough. Especially though, this applies to Laura Ingram, who is now very upset, upset with the current state of things in the Republican Party. And here's what she had to say about Mike Gallagher, a Republican congressman, announcing he's following the lead of Ken Buck and he's resigning. It's too chaotic, it's too embarrassing, and he's out, which is now bringing the Republican majority down to one vote. One vote. My goodness. Well, Mike Gallagher made an affirmative decision to give Democrats more power since the GOP majority will now be down to one. So, what if someone has a delayed flight, gets sick? There is zero room for error. And this is key. Had Gallagher walked out today, Wisconsin would have been able to have a special emergency election to fill his seat. But now, because he's putting it off till April 19th, it remains vacant until next year. Again, this pains me to say this. Thanks, Mike. Hope the future speaker, Hakeem Jeffries, sent you a nice fruit basket today. Oh, it's so delightful. It's so wonderful. It's so brilliant. <laughs> I just love it. Come on. And I have one word to emphasize again. If you've been watching the show regularly, you know what word's coming. Contrast. Can you even fathom the difference between the two years where Democrats had a majority in the House and now what we're seeing here? Where quite literally MAGA is so chaotic so embarrassing, so dysfunctional that members are retiring early to get away from it versus a list of achievements, some bipartisan, the Democrats were able to lead on that is longer and more significant than we've seen in decades since LBJ. That's the contrast. Now I say again, the fact that this election is going to be closed and the Senate could go either way Obviously, the White House is going to be closed. The House of Representatives really freaks me out in terms of what it means about information, accurate information getting to people in their lives. Because if you got even something close to accurate information about the current state of our government and which representatives, which parties are actually prioritizing policies that benefit you and which parties are yeah, anything but prioritizing those things instead prioritizing stunts nonsense investigations political hit jobs and being this trump maga cult and litmus tests out the wazoo if you just could barely understand that it's such an easy decision in november and this is something that I notice in conversations interpersonally that I have with people. It takes about 20 minutes with someone who's not super politically engaged, but oh, I don't know. Very quickly, I can just walk through the list of policies that Joe Biden has overseen the implementation of and quickly summarize what Republicans have been up to. And the decision gets a lot easier for them, I guess is how I'd put that. Here's another clip from Laura Ingram. Now, I've been in Washington, and this is depressing to report, but 30 years. I have never witnessed what I'm witnessing now. A party with a narrow majority in the House of Representatives, everything on the line in the country, but committing a slow suicide, the party. This is why conservatives call the GOP the stupid party, by the way. It's not just conservatives calling it that. <laughs> yeah, that's where they are. I mean, we looked at on yesterday's show, examples, including Marge Taylor Greene, of Republicans saying that their Republican majority is a failure. And Ken Buck saying, can you name one thing we've done that I could run on? And now Fox hosts saying, it's a stupid party. <laughs> and that 
should be the indication for American voters that maybe vote against the party that's saying they're horrible. I don't know. Just a thought. One party saying, hey, we have this track record and a list of achievements that we really think are benefiting your lives and we want to do more if we get more power. And the other party saying, we're a failure. Oh my gosh, this is horrible. Oh, we're so stupid. Should be an easy decision. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, click the alert bell, click the like button, and become a member at lukebeasleyshow.com slash membership.